Hi guys, Ronnie here. By the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to turn this pile of regular lumber. It's getting awful heavy into a beautiful entryway bench that you can uh, either make for yourself or your family or sell for a profit. I got to get to work. This is heavy. Oh my goodness, that's heavy. But this bench is so easy to make that a retired mailman can make it. Why do I say a retired mailman can make it? Because I'm a retired mailman, hung up the hat and shoes about three and a half years ago, got into woodworking. If I can do it, you can do it. Here's what you're gonna need. All right, I'm starting off with two and a half, eight foot two by fours. We need four legs at 18 and a half inches, four in braces slash aprons at 11 inches, and three side aprons at 35 inches. Two for the top, one we're gonna rip down the middle and use the those two sections on either side on the bottom. Let's get to work. All right, I got all the wood cut. Right here I got my 35 inch apron, which I ripped down on the table saw. Now look, if you don't have a table saw, you don't need one. You could use a two by two and just chop that. It's basically the same size. So I got my full width 35 inch aprons. I've got my three 44 inch two by six tops. Here's my four 11 inch uh, top and or end apron and brace. I'm not exactly sure what you call these, but and then I've got my four 18 and 18 and a half inch legs. That's all there is to it, man. Now we got to mark for pocket holes. That's the next step. So now we're going to start working on the top. I've got the two by sixes arranged to how I would like them to be on the top. Now normally I would rip the thin edge off each side and, and route it smooth round over to make it nice and straight but this is going to be a very rustic piece I wanted to show you what you could do with just a chop saw or a hand saw actually so I've got these arranged to how I like them the bottom side is going to be the pocket hole side so I'm going to flip these over in the order that they're in and then what I do is I'll mark I'll mark a board like one two three so I know what order they need to go in after I pocket hole and it'll turn out right so when I mark my top for the pocket holes I know I'm gonna have an inch overhang on each end so I like to come in around an inch and a half and mark it to where it's gonna be hidden by the top and then I'll figure out the length and get it some even spacing right now it's about eight a little over eight inches for even spacing. So what I like to do here is I'll go, I'll go the same direction, this way into this board, this board, eight inches over, I'll go from this board down and this board down, and just alternate all the way across. So a little more than eight and a quarter. So these side aprons are gonna be laying flat, top or bottom, so I like to look at the edges, find out which is the cleaner edge. There's a knot there. Flip it over. That looks like a pretty clean edge to be showing on the outside. So I will make sure I note to make that an outside edge. And then the same here, you can see I've got a nice knot that's kind of dug out here. And this side is actually pretty clean. So this side I'll make my outside. Now, if you like to have the really rustic look and don't mind that might not be bad having this knot out you might not care but uh, it's just something I like to do make it a, as clean as I can on the outside okay this will be the layout that I have on each corner I've got the leg here this is upside down and so I have it lined up with the uh, end aprons and then I got the side apron overlapping a little bit so this is what I got I'll put a pocket hole here 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 and here and I'll do that on all four corners all right I've got all four corners laid out pocket holes marked let me show you what else I do I'll put the number one on each board here here and here so I know that that's a corner that goes together same here you can see the twos threes there 
and finally the fours. Now that's just so I get everything lined up how it's laid out here so once I take it away and start putting pocket holes in I might get confused on how it goes in. Not going to get confused this way. Alright, everything's marked. The legs don't get pocket holes in them. Uh, top, the top is marked there. All the joints are marked here. Now all I got to do is start drilling pocket holes. All right guys, all the pocket holes are drilled. I'm lining it up by numbers and next thing I'm gonna do is start assembly. This is exciting, it's gonna start coming together. You can do this if you haven't built a piece of furniture before, you can do this. So I'm gonna start by doing the legs and the apron on each end, I'll connect those and then I will put the side aprons down, clamp them together and then the base will be done. Well, another step, but this is exciting stuff, so hang in there and watch. All right, the bench is upright. I'm ready to put on the lower aprons. I've got, make it real simple. I use pieces of two by four as spacers from the bottom. That's how high the side rails are gonna be. And then for the end apron, I've got a two by four on the bottom, piece of one by three quarter inch material that I'm gonna use for slats. And then my lower apron rests on that. And the reason I do that is so when I put the slats on, it'll line up with that lower apron. All right, just to make it easy on you, I, that's why I showed you to use a two by four and a piece of one by for your spacing to set your lower apron on. If you wanna really get precise, like I did, because I make multiple benches, I made up this little jig here. It's a partial two by four with a little thin strip I found I had to glue on the end and that brings it up just almost about perfect where the slats line up with the end apron. So it's up to you. If you're going to make a lot of these benches, I suggest dialing it in and getting it in the right. If you're just going to make one and it's a rustic bench, no worries. All right, I got the lower aprons put on, lined up with my slats, pretty dang close. So all I got left to do is put the top together and cut the slats for the bottom. And then I have one more thing. You could be done at that point, but I have another thing that I do. It's a little more advanced. Uh, I'll show you, see if you want to tackle that or not. But we are getting close, my friends, close. Let's keep going. Okay, the top is put together. I'm going to give it a good sanding. You don't need to watch me do that, but uh, you don't want to be getting any splinters when you sit down on this bench. So I'm going to take care of getting this sanded and then we'll be back with the next step.
Hey, if you stuck with me this far, I think you got what it takes to put furniture together. Good job. Let's get going on the rest. All right, finished sanding the top. Sanded it, started out with the 80 grit, went to 180, and I would actually sit on this thing. It's pretty smooth. It's coming together, look at that. You've seen all the steps, not that hard to do. Next thing we gotta do is cut the slats. Figure out how wide we need them and the spacing in between and all that. That's it, coming up. All right guys, I wanted to show you something. Um, for you starting out, if you buy a one by four, say at the big box store, it's gonna come three and a half inches wide. So you would chop that, saw it with a handsaw or chop saw to length, three and a half inches wide for this bench. If you use nine of them, you would get half inch spacing. So I just wanted to kind of give you an idea what half inch spacing looks like. I cut mine down to three and a quarter inch so I can use 10 slats and I get a narrower gap. But I know a lot of you might not have table saws, so I just wanted to show you this is an option. Three and a half inch board comes straight from the store. You just cut it to length and then that's the spacing that it would be and you'd have nine, you'd have, uh, nine of them across. Anyway, I am going to rip mine down to three and a quarter like I usually do, and I'll show you what that looks like after a bit. So here I got the slats laid out. Um, I ripped them down to three and a quarter, like I said, and the length is 13 and a half inches. I like to have just a little bit of uh, over space between the uh, end of the slat and the apron. So this is um, my layout with three and a quarter inch width slats. Like I said, if you buy it off the shelf, three and a half inch slats, you'll have a wider spacing. You can keep the square ends like this, but I like to bevel mine on the miter saw. And instead of getting the square look, I get the look like this. So this is how they're all laid out, beveled ends, like I said. This is how I like to do it, it's very popular. Seems to sell pretty quickly. People like this look, but it's up to you. I mean, people sell uh, the straight end look as well. So if you have the ability to do it this way, it's your choice. All right, next step is, I told you earlier, I'm doing an advanced step that I like to do. Um, you might want to tackle. I'm not going to go real depth into it in this video, but um, it involves putting in the, the cross pieces, fitting them in on each end just to finish it up. So I will get to that. Probably not a lot of explanation. I'll give you the angles in case you want to try it, but uh, I'll get that done. And then we will talk about uh, staining. All right, guys, so this is the extra touch I like to put on the cross pieces. If you want to try it, the uh, degrees is 35 degrees for the angle up here, 20 degrees for the intersection. What I do, so I got the other side here, is I cut out uh, half notches on my miter saw. So you got the 35 degrees, your 20 degrees, and then halfway down. So. They just fit together like that and slide on in. Next thing to do is decide what color of stain or if you want to paint it. I'm going to go with a dark walnut. That seems to be very popular with my benches. They go pretty fast, sell pretty fast. So I'm going to stain. I always stain the slats, the X pieces, and the top and the table all separate. So then when it's time to put it all together, it's just easier that way. You don't have any uh, seams that need to be stained or anything like that. So I'm going to stain this up in a dark walnut. Magic of video editing. You'll see that right now. Now take a look at how that turned out. Look at that. Is that a beautiful bench or what? You got the nice beveled slats coming across evenly spaced, fairly evenly. <laughs> 
and you got the cross end. I'm telling you what, you build this for your first piece of furniture, you're going to impress your family and friends and you probably make a buck or two selling it. So uh, nothing's attached right now, I just got everything setting in place. So I'm going to show you next what I do to uh, go about putting everything together. Okay, so once I have all the spacing how I like it, then I'll put a piece of blue tape over to hold each one in place. Then I will go through, remove the first one, put some glue down, both sides. Place it back in place. Trying to do this around the camera. Get it lined up. And then come in with my, my gun. Just like that. And then I'll do the same thing on all the rest of them. So for these cross braces, I'm going to glue the bottoms and tops, slide them in, and then uh, pin nail it in from the top and the bottom. I should mention that with the slats, I used one and a half inch nails. I'm going to use two inch nails for these cross pieces. Then I'll do the other side and then I'll flip it over and do the bottoms. All right, last thing to do is to secure the top to the bench. We're almost done. I got my little measuring guide to help me get it lined up side to side. Looks pretty good. All right, guys, we're down to the final step. It's just securing this top onto the bench. I'm going to use these two and a half inch screws from underneath inch and a half top, inch and a half apron. It's three inches, you don't wanna go through, so two and a half inches. So is this a beautiful bench or what? Turned out beautiful. And you know what? It's absolutely doable for you if you wanna build your first piece of furniture. Remember, I'm a retired mailman. If I can build it, anybody can. I'll catch you on the next video.